my optimism is based on the fact that if you go back, I mean, one advantage I have of being old is that I can look back 25 or 30 years and remember that cities and low-income communities were in much worse shape then than they are now, in spite of what's happened in the past couple of years. Cities were pretty much being written off. They were disinvested, deteriorated, and abandoned. Crime was rampant. Social disorganization was the norm. People literally were saying cities were an anachronism and we had to find a new way. And yet all of that turned around. Cities came back over the last 20, 25 years. Low-income communities did better over that period of time. Why? And I would argue that was because partnerships were created at all levels among government, the for-profit sector, banks, Bank of America in particular, I might add, and nonprofits like LISC. Big is not always bad, and sometimes it is the largest resources that can do the most. And um, you might not expect this, but it's the large banks, the large financial institutions that work with the groups like LISC and others because our whole, our whole play here is that um, it's our obligation and it's our, our opportunity to see economic growth. In order to set opportunity in motion, the theme here, it's, it's uh, what kind of resources can we uh, bring to bear. It's the lending, it's the investing, it's the charitable giving, and frankly, sometimes it's the ability to have been doing it for decades. The private sector, let's face it, the banks were the major provider of capital for the turnaround of cities and low-income communities over the last 25, 25 years. No matter what you may think of banks at this moment, that is a fact. The Bank of America invested a billion dollars just through LISC during that period of time. That's in addition to everything else they did and all the other banks did as well. So I would argue that those partnerships are there. They're there today. They haven't gone away. The danger is now that we overlook them, that we lose the momentum that we have developed over the past 20 years or so. It's just important to keep in mind that that infrastructure is there and we continue we need to continue to nurture and support it. And, th and, and we're doing that better than other places are doing. That is you, certainly so. my impression, and I, th I think that's something that, that makes us somewhat unique, and I think it's something we have to continue and, and nurture. Given my perspective on this, the crown jewels of the United States experience is exactly what Michael just, just highlighted, that the CRA and the low-income tax credit and the SBA providing not only loan guarantees to incent banks to work uh, with small businesses and low-income communities, but also training, our technical colleges, all that stuff doesn't exist anywhere else but the in the world like we've got it. Big banks often work through CDFI, so uh, a, something that Michael runs, a CDFI, and we, they are become, in essence, in America, the microfinancers. We provide them with capital, we provide them with uh, market or below market loans, with investments, with charitable giving. And that's in essence what, what Willie and Cheryl are also talking about on a completely different level. It's CDFI in the U.S. is I think really served as a, as a, as a prototype for investments going forward. In terms of the burgeoning field of impact investing, so it's you know, making investments that generate you know, economic, social um, and environmental returns as well as financial return, it's a burgeoning market. It's about $100 billion per year annually. So you know, it's expected to be capitalized at about $500 billion in five years. But we need to do all the stuff that happens to create new markets. You gotta create intermediary structures. You gotta put metrics in place. You gotta put rating systems in place that bring the clarity that markets need to function. So we need to incent that kind of you know, capitalization and that kind of architecture and building. And you incent it how? I think public-private partnerships, using the bully pulpit of an administration that believes that private sector is gonna sort of push this new way of thinking out. And then again, I think sort of the investment in human capital is absolutely critical. You know, Michael Milken talks about you know, the most important asset class is human capital. We need to invest in things like education reform. That's gonna get us up and out of this. It's really important. The bottom line is it's, it's a country capable of um, setting in motion enough change, whether it's the regulatory reform, whether it's what uh, Michael and Cheryl and Willie have talked about in terms of uh, investing and then making that into something greater. <laughs>